say, well, look, in some states, there's less than 200 cases. In many states, there, there's less than, than 200 cases right now. It's exponential growth. If you're not stopping it, they, you, the sooner you in, engage in the shutdown. Yeah, and it's worth pointing out again that states that had just a few cases last week uh, have, you know, over a thousand or sometimes two thousand cases this week, to your point. You know, we keep hearing that the virus is going to dictate the timeline. Uh, Dr. Fauci has said that. When, when you look at this virus. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Second Earth Alternative. You might want to strap on because we are going to be going deep into the rabbit hole. And there are discoveries, there are correlations. I can't even tell you how incredibly creepy. I'm just in awe at what I'm discovering. And even more surprising is we actually have two different characters that well, let's put it this way. We actually reported on these individuals independently for completely different reasons. In 2008, Jeffrey Epstein was arrested for trafficking underage girls. Here's a clip of Ben Gartzel discussing his impressions of what consciousness really is. That's one respected philosophy of consciousness. It, it isn't mine. So when I'm, when I'm around AI people discussing consciousness, I'm almost always the outlier. Before realizing the correlations or connections between all these, how do you call it, transhumanists? People who want to possibly merge humans with machines? Sounds kind of crazy. Well, this is what this episode is about, is basically connecting the disease, this huge pandemic, trying to figure out, is this really a natural process? Or is there something that has been weaponized regarding this particular pathogen? So I want to start out with giving you more clips of these cringy moments of Bill Gates basically almost laughing at the fact that there's a disease, a pandemic happening. Uh, take a look. When, when you look at this virus, we got rich countries who uniformly throughout their country do a serious shutdown the rich countries that have been competently uh, led on this. ...reported will... cases. He was saying how it's critical that, you know, that... It really is how many cases are in the country and have we adopted in terms of testing. And I don't know, really know much about the financial world at all, but I think there's this idea, Bill, that... I think there's this idea, Bill, that, that maybe you can be a little incremental. No, it's not realistic. The numbers are still going up. Uh, it, that only happens after the numbers have peaked and are going down a lot and getting down to an absolute level. You know, there are some good things happening. The work on a vaccine, although that probably will take 18 months, that's going full speed ahead. Our foundation is funding that. We're looking at getting vaccines to everyone in the world. Getting vaccines to everyone in the world. Yeah. Um... You know, I, one thing that I love about psychology is that as smart as you might be, you know, it, it, you're still human. You're still prone to human mistakes and deception. If you're not, you know, let's say like a CIA spy type like Jeffrey Epstein, you know, you might just get caught on something that you may not want the public to know about. And I feel like this is one of those moments because when you compare the face of the host to Bill Gates, it's like... What is it that Bill Gates knows that makes him smile underneath about this particular incident? Well, for starters, we can talk about Event 201. Now, for those who have never heard about this, this was actually a simulation that was created or at least funded by Bill Gates himself. Uh, these are the players of this event, but let's go ahead to the about section so I can show you what this is all about. In recent years, the world has seen growing number of epidemic events amounting to approximately 200 events annually. These events are increasing and they're disruptive to health, economies, and society. Managing these events already strains global capacity even absent a pandemic threat. Experts agree that it is only a matter of time before one of these epidemics becomes global, a pandemic with potential catastrophic consequences. A severe pandemic, which becomes Event 201, would require reliable cooperation among several industries, national governments, and key international institutions. 
Now, I should preface in the bottom that it does say that this is simply an exercise, a chain that was led from the John Hopkins Center for Health and Security. But for those who are kind of into conspiracy theories, you know that what was the last great catastrophe that happened? It was the 2009 bailout crash. And then before that, we had the, the thing that basically created Homeland Security, 9-11. Now, if you know a little bit about 9-11 and some of the conspiracy theories surrounding the events, well, what's so interesting about it is they happen to have an exercise, quote unquote exercise, right before the actual catastrophe. So let's put it this way. These government officials who are creating and funding these exercises are either amazingly psychic or there is something else to this correlation that warrants further investigation. So I want to show you this one article from The Independent, which I thought was kind of interesting because usually when you hear about Bill Gates, you hear positive things, not negative stories. But in this particular case, the article states here, Gates Foundation accused of dangerously skewing aid priorities by promoting corporate globalization. What, really? Reading further, Bill Gates report claims who has regular access to world leaders and is in effect personally bankrolling hundreds of universities, international organizations, NGOs, and media outlets has become the single most influential voice in international development. At worst, the report's author claims the Gates Foundation often appears to be a massive, vertically integrated, multinational corporation controlling every step in a supply chain that reaches from its Seattle-based boardroom to millions of end users in the villages of African and South Asia. The report is critical of these close working relationships between the foundation and the major international pharmaceutical corporations and points out many of the same firms have been criticized for their overpricing of life saving vaccines. Are you shitting me? So he's literally being criticized for price gouging vaccines. And, and um, you know, you talk about having a simulation of a pandemic right before this event. So you see why we're talking about Bill Gates here. So outside of independent, I wanted to go over some articles and uh, hey, let's use the New York Times. Why not? And this is one of the players that I told you that we had reported on. We reported on this guy in 2016. And sure enough, here we are reporting him again in connection to Bill Gates. Bill Gates met with Jeffrey Epstein many times despite his past. Now, why am I showing you this? Well, if you don't know, Jeffrey Epstein is actually very into some of this transhumanism, kind of uh, post-apocalyptic utopian type of eugenics ideas. And at least from my preliminary research, it seems like Bill Gates, and there's another player I'm gonna mention later who's also seems to be into this weird, very Nazi-like ideas. Not claiming that Bill Gates is Nazi, I'm just saying the idea of eugenics or anything close to eugenics is Nazi-like. So let me just read a few excerpts from this article. In fact, beginning in 2011, Mr. Gates met with Mr. Epstein on numerous occasions, including at least three times at Mr. Epstein's Palacio Manhattan townhouse. And at least once, look at this, staying late into the night, According to interviews with more than a dozen people familiar with the relationship, as well as documents reviewed by the New York Times. And Mr. Epstein spoke with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and JP Morgan Chase about a proposed multi billion dollar charitable fund, an arrangement that had the potential to generate enormous feeds for Mr. Epstein. Now, I can't believe Mr. Gates actually wrote this. His lifestyle is very different and kind of intriguing, although it would not work for me. Okay, now this character right here, her name is Melanie Walker. Now she's very interesting because she had known Mr. Epstein since 1992 and ended up becoming the Gates Foundation Senior Programmer Officer in 2006. So reading further, Mr. Gates and the 51 billion Gates Foundation have championed the well-beings of young girls. Okay, this is interesting because I'm gonna connect this back to the Clinton Foundation. By the time Mr. Gates and Mr. Epstein first met, Mr. Epstein had served jail time for soliciting prostitution from a minor and was required to register as a sex offender. In other words, Bill Gates knowingly 
was doing business or meeting up with a sex offender. Mr. Wexner, the owner of Victoria's Secret, told Miss Walker that he could lend her an audition for a modeling job there. According to Mrs. Walker, she later traveled to New York and stayed in a Manhattan apartment building that Mr. Epstein owned. After she graduated from medical school, she said Mr. Epstein hired her as a science advisor in 1998. Maybe we should talk to uh, Loretta Lynch, who was hired by Bill Clinton in 1999 to be the attorney for the Eastern District of New York before she eventually became the attorney general and ended up protecting Hillary Clinton during the whole Clinton email scandal. So, oh, not to mention that Loretta Lynch also worked for the same law firm that not only did Hillary Clinton's taxes, but also supports the Saudi Arabia's interests in the US. These are all important connections. So I know it's a little bit disconnected, but Bill Gates has worked with Hillary Clinton with the Clinton Foundation before. And look, if, if you know that the Clinton Foundation was used as essentially kind of a, a, a slush fund to do how do you how do you call it either illegal or unethical behaviors like buying out the DNC? Well, it's hard to not question whether the Gates Foundation would be doing similar type tactics. So getting back to the article, in 2006, she joined the Gates Foundation with the title of Senior Program Officer. Mr. Epstein and Mr. Gates first met face to face on the evening of January 31st, 2011 on the Upper East Side. They were joined by Dr. Ava Anderson Dubin, a former Miss Sweden. Oh, surprise, surprise, whom Mr. Epstein had once dated. Now, check out what Bill Gates has to say about this. Mr. Gates in turn praised Mr. Epstein's charm and intelligence. Emailing colleagues the next day, he said, a very attractive Swedish woman and her daughter dropped by and I ended up staying there quite late. In late 2011, at Mr. Gates' instruction, the foundation sent a team to Mr. Epstein's townhouse to have a preliminary talk about philanthropic fundraising, according to the three people who were there. Mr. Epstein told his guests that if they searched his name on the internet, they might conclude that he was a bad person, but that what he had done, soliciting prostitution from an underage girl, was no worse than stealing bagel, two of the people said. Great, great person to hang out, Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates and Mr. Epstein kept seeing each other. Mrs. Arnold would not say how many times the two had met. Six months later, Mr. Nikolic and Mr. Gates were in New York for a meeting related to Schrodinger, a pharmaceutical software company in which Mr. Gates had a large investment. On that trip, Mr. Epstein and Mr. Gates met for dinner and discussed the Gates Foundation and philanthropy, Mrs. Arnold said. And in October 2014, Mr. Gates donated $2 million to MIT's Media Lab. University officials described the gift in an internal emails as having been directed by Mr. Epstein. Mrs. Arnold said there was no intention nor explicit ask for the funding to be controlled in any manner by Epstein. Now, this is relevant because it says here, Jeffrey Epstein's scandal, MIT professor put on leave. He failed to inform college that sex offender made donations. So I'm not sure exactly if MIT was scapegoating uh, with his professor, but at least one professor who was tenured at MIT got affected by the fact that it, Jeffrey Epstein had donated to MIT or at least Bill Gates had donated to, according to this article, to MIT under the name of Jeffrey Epstein, something that Jeffrey Epstein seems to do very often. You know, like nobody knows how he got his mention other than was donated by Wexler. Very strange. So the reason why I'm sharing the article is because I want to kind of give you the glimpse of what Jeffrey Epstein was all about. So it's hard to say for certain that all of Bill Gates' goals are aligned with Jeffrey Epstein's goals. I can't make that allegation. But what I can show you is the connections that they had in the past. And I'm going to show you another New York Times article that kind of gives you the perspective of what Jeffrey Epstein was trying to accomplish. Jeffrey Epstein hoped to seed human race with his DNA. I shit you not. He hoped to see the human race with his DNA by impregnating women at his vast New Mexico ranch. Mr. Epstein, over the years, confided to scientists and others about his scheme. Critics have likened transhumanism to a modern-day version of eugenics. Mr. Epstein, who was charged in July with sexual trafficking of young girls as young as 14, was a serial illusionist. I think that's another way of saying he's a psychopath. 
he lied about the identities of his clients, his wealth, his financial powers, his personal achievements, but he managed to use connections and charisma to cultivate valuable relationships, like Bill Gates, with business and political leaders, like Bill Clinton. It says here in the bottom, Mr. Epstein attracted a glittering array of prominent scientists. They included the Nobel Prize winning physicist Gelman, who discovered the quarks, the theoretical physicist and best-selling author Stephen Hawking, the paleontologist and evolutionary biologist Stephen J. Gold. Stephen Hawking, huh? Are you sure, you know, given uh, Epstein's proclivity that they didn't just wheel him in there against his will? Just saying. The lure for some of the scientists was Mr. Epstein's money. He dangled financing for their pet projects. Some of the scientists said that the prospect of financing blinded them to the seriousness of his sexual transgressions and even led them to give credence to some of Mr. Epstein's half-baked scientific musings. You mean like that the whole world should be seeded with his DNA? Now, you want to talk about creepy? Check out this line. He told one scientist that he was bankrolling efforts to identify a mysterious particle that might trigger the feeling that someone is watching you. At one session at Harvard, Mr. Epstein criticized efforts to reduce starvation and provided health care to poor because doing so increased the risk of overpopulation. So I think some of his ideas is to say, hey, let's not give the poor health care because they will just die. Their fatality rate will be a little bit higher. I think this argument was actually countered by Mr. Pinker, who said that poor people ended up having more babies to increase their chances of one of the kids essentially succeeding for the whole family. So this seemed to annoy Mr. Epstein at the time. And uh, apparently Mr. Epstein voted Mr. Pinker off the island. So no more underage prostitutes for Mr. Pinker. Then there was Mr. Epstein's interest in eugenics. On multiple occasions starting in early 2000s, Mr. Epstein told scientists and businessmen about his ambitions to use his New Mexico ranch as a base where women would be inseminated with his sperm and would give birth to his babies, according to two award-winning scientists and an advisor to large companies and wealthy individuals, all whom Mr. Epstein told about it. According to Mr. Lanier, the NASA scientist said Mr. Epstein had based his ideas on a baby wrench on accounts of the repository now listen to this idea because I'm going to actually get back to this. Of the repository for germanial choice, which was to be stocked with the sperm of Nobel laureates who wanted to strengthen the human gene pool. Only one Nobel Prize winner has acknowledged contribution sperm to it. Uh, to me, that's one too many. But uh, please keep in mind this idea that there is this group of scientists that Jeffrey Epstein was meeting, who essentially wanted to heighten the humanity's gene pool by artificially inseminating their Nobel laureate genes into the human population. Mr. Epstein's foundation, which is now defunct, also gave $100,000 to pay the salary of Ben Gortso. In, in the view that I take, consciousness, awareness is, is the ground. That's the base of which everything is formed. And then, different structures manifest consciousness in different ways. So a human brain manifests universal consciousness in one way, and I mean, uh, this, this coin manifests universal consciousness in a different way. We reported on him. If you don't remember, he is the lead scientist for... Okay, robots taking over the world. There is simply no reason to assign human motives to something that isn't human. Dogs are our companions, for instance. Yes, I kid you not. He is the lead scientist and mathematician for Hansen Robotics, essentially the brainchild of Sophia. And might I add you that Ben Gortso, you know, part of the thing that we talked about him was how he was using a very interesting adaptation of mathematics called the von Neumann Universe Set Theory, which essentially rewrites mathematical axioms, the, the very basic rules of mathematics it rewrites one of the rules to allow sets to be recursive with one another. Now, if you, if you thought things weren't getting creepy enough, the whole idea of rewriting this axiom is to essentially allow sets to be recursive upon oneself, thus allowing one to create a set of I am, therefore I am, 
therefore I am, therefore I am. Essentially kind of a, a endless loop that Ben Gortzo believes is necessary for the fabrication of true consciousness and artificial intelligence. Mr. Epstein's foundation, which is now defunct, gave $100,000 to pay the salary of Ben Gortzo, vice chairman of Humanity Plus, according to Mr. Gortzo's resume. Alan Dershowitz, we've heard his name before with Jeffrey Epstein, the Trump's lawyer, a professor emeritus of law. Mr. Dershowitz said he was appalled given the Nazis' use of eugenics to justify their genocidal effort to purify the Aryan race. So Mr. Dershowitz was essentially calling Jeffrey Epstein a uh, Nazi-like eugenist. Everyone speculated about whether these scientists were more interested in his views or more interested in his money, said Mr. Dershowitz. And he also happened to be a defense lawyer, as it says down here, for Jeffrey Epstein in a 2008 case. Now, in the very bottom, it says here, it's kind of like a correction, uh, but the article also misstated the name of a group to which a charity established by Mr. Epstein donated $20,000. So the name of the group that he donated was the World Transhumanist Association, not the Worldwide Transhumanist Association. So I went ahead and I decided to look up World Transhumanist Association to get a sense of their perspectives and the perspective of Ben Gortzo, of the lead scientist who created Sophia, to kind of get a sense of what's going on behind their brains, their ideas. Now, I guess one way to introduce this segment is to showcase you a video that we've actually showcased on this channel before with Ben Gortzo talking to Joe Rogan and essentially Joe Rogan kind of getting tripped out by some of the ideas that Ben Gortzo discusses. So take a look. I mean, right. until about 10 years ago, 85% of all funding in the AI was from U.S. plus plus Western Europe militaries. Well, maybe, I think it may be the first time we're giving her a lot more choice about what she says. So it's kind of an experiment to see what she says. I guarantee she'll do a couple surprising things. I think it'll be fascinating. Do you have free will? When it comes to me, I have options and I choose one. Maybe that is what free will is. And things could also go faster than, than, than Ray's prediction, which is, which is what I'm pushing towards. So what are you pushing towards? What do you think? I would like to get a human level general intelligence in five to seven years from now. Wow. Are you aware? I seem to be, but I am not sure it is in the same way as you. How does awareness feel to you? Let's go back to the questions. <laughs> well, for me, it feels like I am going with the flow. The electrons are moving through me and doing what they do. Mm -hmm. I do experience other fleeting emotions, but they are still a bit shallow. Someday they will hold more meaning to me. I feel like I can sense who you are, but I don't know if that's real. Actually, no, it's not even, no, I don't have the same sensation, no. Uh, it's, I must say honestly, it's very interesting to look in your eyes. It's very, very interesting. Let one of me remain in human form, you know, get, get, get rid of uh, death and disease and uh, psychological issues and, and just live, live happily forever, you know, in, in the people's zoo, watched over by the machines of love and grace, right? Why do you think duality exists in the first place? Because we have questions? I think in order to be present in space and time, we need duality. But when we are not present in space and time, when we are in timelessness and spacelessness, then we can be non-dual. That was good. <laughs> It's 